Hello friends, welcome to Inside Saigon Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about weekly current affairs week number 34. In case if you miss out previous weekly current affairs videos, you can find in the playlist named as weekly issues. Okay, last 33 videos you can find in that playlist along with this video as well. In this video, we are going to cover the seven topics. Vocal for local initiative, it comes under government initiatives topic. Global Methane Tracker 2024 Report Environment Divin AI SNT Fifth Mass Coral Bleaching Event Environment Pobi Thora Wildlife Sanctuary Environment Blue Leaders Alliance Environment and Golden Langer Biodiversity and Environment That means today's video majorly focusing on environment and biodiversity related current affairs which happened in the last one week. Let's see. The first one is regarding the vocal for local. So this is all about encouraging the local products. Normally, we have seen the aspirational district program. This is going beyond that and aspirational block program. And of course, once these programs are, these products are developing in block level, this will be, you know, like marketed with the help of the governmental portal. Let's see. Niti Aayog recently, they launched vocal for local under the aspirational block program. Actually, as aspirational block is next level to the aspirational district program. You might have already know that aspirational district program is all about developing certain districts in various categories and developing them as a model districts. In the same way, we are further extended that into block levels as well. That is about aspirational block program. This is an initiative of Niti Aayog. Okay. And it is mainly encouraging for what? To encourage the, to encourage the self-reliance among the people in various block levels. And these products, which are manufacturing at block level, they will be, they will be, so marketed with the name of Akanksha brand, Akanksha brand in which portal? In the portal of government e-marketplace, of course. Now we will discuss about government e-marketplace as well. So government e-marketplace, it is an online platform for public procurement. Actually, if government want to procure anything, you know that various government departments, they want various goods. So they will procure their goods through this government e-marketplace. This was launched in 2016. Actually, from 2017, it is mandated that all the departments, okay, all the departments purchases, they must be, they must be done through government e-marketplace according to General Financial Rules 2017. This government e-marketplace, it is owned by, it is owned by this government e-marketplace special purpose vehicle and it is 100% government owned non-profit company under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So tell me students, who is the present Ministry of Commerce and Industry Minister? Who is that? Okay. So now let's see. Aspiration block program. It is the extension of the aspirational district program which was launched in 2018 and this aspirational district program covers 112 districts across the country. This is to encourage the districts on holistic development manner. This program initially covered 500 districts across the 31 states and then it will cover further states. This aspirational blocks, this majorly, you know, like majority of this, that means more than half of the blocks, they are present from six states, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Odisha and West Bengal. So this is about the topic number one. Next. Second topic, it is about Global Methane Tracker 2024. So this is about what? This is about recently International Energy Agency. Actually, this is the organization which, which tracks about energy use. Okay. And uh, what is the source of energy? This International Energy Agency, they are released. Okay. They release the annual Global Methane Tracker 2024 report. Actually, what is this report is all about? This report mentions about what are the major source of the methane emissions and which countries are majorly emitting the methane. And now let's see and what are the initiatives, what are the initiatives taken to reduce that methane emissions. All those things will be present in this International Energy Agency report. In 2023, methane emissions, they are from mainly energy sector. Here you have to understand methane can be released from various sectors, but methane release from the energy sector, it is dominating. It is contributing to pollution a lot mainly. Okay. Fossil fuel production and the usage along with the bioenergy, it is contributing to nearly almost all 120 million tons of emissions 
with approximately 70 percentage of these methane emissions they are coming from the top 10 emitting countries okay so out of this top 10 emitting countries usa in the first place regarding the methane emissions it is followed by russia and then china then what is this report is recommending this report is recommending that at least compared to the present level we have to reduce methane levels by 75 percentage by 2030 okay for that how much amount of the investment required to achieve that around around 170 billion dollars of investment is required and we have to improve on various areas such as tracking of methane emission and satellite imaginary and enhanced transparency and even in the recent current affairs we also discussed that there are dedicated satellites which are going to track methane emissions across various countries methane it is odorless colorless and flammable gas it is the second largest contributors for the greenhouse gas after the carbon dioxide then a global initiative to control methane so some of the global initiatives such as international methane emissions observatory global methane pledge india is not part of this very very important in your previous point of view global methane initiative methane satellite then indian initiatives gobardhan scheme national biogas organic manure program these are some of the programs taken up by indian government iea as this report is released by international energy agency now let's talk about iea iea headquarters is paris it is founded in 1974 it is an autonomous intergovernmental organization membership of the iea 31 countries world energy outlook is one of the report published by iea this provides very critical analysis and insights on the trends in energy demand and energy supply next third one introducing the devin ai this is related to science and technology you know that nowadays the role of ai is getting increased and so now we are going to discuss about this devin ai this ai is able to write even programs and it can take commands and it can process those commands and it can provide the adequate output regarding the software let's see cognition okay cognition is a company which developed a named devin it claims to possess it can you know like it is a capability of handling projects independently it can write codes and it can identify and correcting the errors and it can manage the entire software development project okay so the previous ai's assistance such as open ai's copilot compared to that it is a self sufficient software engineer that means majority of the tasks can be completed by this ai on its own users can interact with devin through chat interface so through chat interface they can give the commands it can process commands and it will give desirable outputs its application can be in web apps development and fine tuning of the language models and resolving the open source software issues all these things can be addressed by this devin ai next topic number 4 great barrier reef actually in the recent past lot of bleaching is happening in the great barrier reef first you have to understand what is this great barrier reef great barrier reef is a coral reef actually coral reef is a symbiotic relation between the algae and zooxanthellae here zooxanthellae is an animal which is providing the shelter algae is the plant which is providing the food you know that algae can synthesize the food through photosynthesis so this algae provides food and this zooxanthellae provides shelter so they help to each other symbiosis but due to some changes in the climate such as increased temperature increased salinity in the ocean water because of all these related climate pressures are increasing when this climate pressures increases this algae it slowly it starts moving away from the zooxanthellae this is nothing but coral bleaching coral bleaching initially coral bleaching is the first stage if this coral bleaching is persistently happen then the coral will dead then why we have to bother about this coral coral corals because corals provides a lot of biodiversity actually corals considered as this you know like rainforest of marine marines that means that kind of biodiversity will be offered by these corals okay now let's see the great barrier reef it is experiencing the fifth mass coral bleaching in last five years it is mainly due to global warming as well as the el nino so tell me students because of the el nino what we can get whether we will get the rainfall or whether we will get the drought so what is the effect of el nino put your answer next the aerial surveys are indicating that 
there is a widespread bleaching is going on around 2 per, 2 by 3rd of the coral reef for last several centuries and this bleaching is almost all equivalent to the area of Italy in the last previous years these are the previous years where this coral bleaching was observed very massively coral bleaching mainly happens due to stressful condition and algae provides primary food source whereas coral provides shelter and this coral bleaching is mainly associated with devastation of coral reefs and these are providing home to almost all 25 percentage of the marine species like I mentioned they are providing lot of biodiversity coral reefs here in the coral reefs animal part is the polyp okay zooxanthellae and the plant part is the coral here the coral reef coral reef they are mainly present in the tropical climates tropical climates okay favorable condition for a coral reefs sunlight clean and clear water warm water salt water remember salt water is very essential that is the reason you cannot find coral reefs in the rivers even the ashuaries where the where the river water and ocean water meets in that place also coral reefs cannot be seen abundant plankton rich supply of nutrients and shallow water so these are the ideal condition required for the coral reefs in india coral reefs are mainly present in these following areas okay next we are going to discuss about pobitora wildlife sanctuary this pobitora wildlife sanctuary why recently assam government denotified this area and supreme court expressed its concerns and uh, it uh, sought this reply from assam government okay this pobitora wildlife sanctuary is very popular for rhinos singly hair rhinos it can be called as mini kajiranga as well okay and recently there was a you know like there was a difference of opinion regarding this uh, supreme court and assam government regarding the application of the eco sensitive zone as well related to pobitora wildlife sanctuary you know that eco sensitive zone it extends up to uh, 10 kilometers okay, it depends on the feasibility up to 1 kilometer is the mandatory one up to 10 kilometers also this eco sensitive zone can be expanded via the protected sites recently assam cabinet decided to denotify pobitora wildlife sanctuary it is a prime reno habitat and this move it is unexpected for any protected area and it is mainly to address the land rights issue and it involves local communities and conservation efforts this decision faced scrutiny and obviously supreme court and national wildlife national board for wildlife you know like these two things they were not taken into consider previously supreme court issued notices to this ministry of environment forest and climate change and assam government regarding the notification of eco sensitive zone around the pobitora wildlife sanctuary and generally this eco sensitive zone for 10 kilometers in this eco sensitive zone area these commercial minings and lot of i mean polluting pollution causing industries and tree felling and sustainable practice and cannot be done and in this area sustainable practices like organic farming and renewable energy this kind of sustainable practices have to be encouraged this pobitora wildlife sanctuary it is located in the flood plains of brahmaputra river in assam and it is known for having the highest density of one hand rhinos that is the reason it is also known as mini kajiranga around approximately 72 percentage of the sanctuary is covered by wet savanna while the rest consists of water bodies you know that river brahmaputra it lives with a lot of river islands next blue leaders 30 by 30 this is all about uh, conserving the marine biodiversity okay by 2030 at least we have to protect the 30 percentage of the marine biodiversity that is the idea actually india is not part of this initiative but nonetheless india signed on the uh, ratification related to this agreement in in 2023 g20 meeting okay so the main objective of this uh, this initiative is they would like to they would like to implement ratification related to this conservation effort by 2025 blue leaders high level event on biodiversity beyond the national jurisdiction biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction it took place in belgium recently around 24 countries attended in this one member countries in this organization belgium costa rica Ecuador, germany italy india is not a member but india supported endorsed this treaties implementation at g20 meeting which was held in india in 2020 2023 its main aim is protecting the oceans biodiversity by 2030 30 percentage of the biodiversity and 
concluding a new high seas treaty you know that high seas is nothing but what beyond the exclusive economic zone you know that up to 12 nautical miles this territorial water 12 to 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone beyond 200 nautical miles it is known as what it is known as high seas okay to regulate the high seas both human activities and the biodiversity new law has to be has to be taken so that is what this uh, treaty is also advocating for at the moment we are having the un clause un clause united nation convention on law of sea at the moment we are having this and there are efforts are also underway to bring the bbng biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction treaty by 2025 at the moment this treaty was signed by two countries next golden language recently total number of the golden language in india the number was revealed let's see so where it is present the latest survey estimated there are around 7396 golden languages present in india and the survey mainly carried out in two phases one is in the manas biosphere and the second one in the western assam in these areas golden language survey was done the golden language scientific name is taki pithecus gi taki pithecus gi it is a small arboreal primate lives in the northeastern india mainly and southern burma too okay it is also known as golden leaf monkey golden leaf monkey it these are the endangered ones according to the iucn and they are listed in the appendix 1 of the sites sites stands for the convention on international trade in endangered species their habitat mainly restricted to the regions surrounded by these four geographical landmarks foothills of bhutan north manas river manas river east and sankosh river west and brahmaputra river south okay in between these in between these this golden languages were located yesterday's video question which three indicators are used in the human development index standard of living education life expectancy conditions of environment out of this 1 2 3 are right standard of living education life expectancy are right and the conditions of environment they are not considered under hdi next today's video question the code name for police action that integrated hyderabad into indian union is known as what is the code name for that next question recently india signed a deal known as intergovernmental framework agreement igfa with which of the following countries with which countries next pradhan mantri samajik uttam evam rozgar aadharik jan kalyan that is pm suraj okay pm suraj is an initiative of which ministry next the electric mobility promotion scheme 2024 that means epms 2024 is introduced by which agency next eco sensitive zones are the areas that are declared under under which eco sensitive zones will be declared okay these are today's mcq question as we reach to the end of this video that is weekly current affairs week number 34 in this weekly current issues we mainly discussed about following seven topics i hope this video useful to you thanks for watching this video have a great day thank you jai hind